What is good guys? It is your boy Dreamer and today I'm going to be bringing you another FIFA 18 video. Today I'm going to be bringing you the best starting Bundesliga squad that you can have in my opinion. I did, uh, if you didn't catch the La Liga video, go ahead and check out that video. I did that video yesterday and then if you didn't catch the best strikers in the game or not best strikers in the game, but the best starting strikers. That video came out two days ago, so go ahead and go and watch those before you tune into this one. Remember, if you like the video, please leave a like, and if you are new to the channel, please subscribe, and also if you feel like I'm leaving anybody out or somebody that you think should be in the video that's not in the video, please leave a comment, and if you disagree with anybody that I, that I think should be here, please leave a comment down below. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, so... First here, we have the striker, Divock Origi, left wing, Andre Scherler, right wing, Kingsley Komen, uh, center mid, Goretzka, Cam uh, Forsberg, center mid, Junuzovic, uh, left back, Wendell, center back, Stark, center back, Ta, right back, Weiser, and goalkeeper, Ralph Farman. Let's get into some pretty detailed stats here. Since the web app did come out today, we I think we have the detailed stats for the entire starting 11. So we're going to be taking a look at all those. I even did some comparisons for you guys for players that you could potentially replace any of these players with. But these are just the players that I think will be the most affordable at the time. And if not the most affordable, at least the best at that time. So let's get into it. So the first player that we're going to be looking at here is Divock Origi. Uh, 78 rated striker. I'm glad he got that move from Liverpool to Wolfsburg just because he was not getting that that uh, playtime at Liverpool that I think he deserves. But coming in with high medium work rates, four star skin moves, three star weak foot. He has 83 pace, 76 shooting, 68 passing, 75 dribbling, and 77 physical. Also with 31 defending, but that's irrelevant given that he's a striker. Um, I think at 6-1, high medium work rates, I think Divock Origi will definitely be a force to be reckoned with. I don't picture a lot of uh, defenders pulling him off the ball, especially also having 83 pace, which uh, having 82 acceleration, 84 sprint speed, I, I think once he's through, he's gone. There's no defender that's going to catch him. Having 80 positioning is going to keep him right at the top where he needs to be every time, especially if you put high-low work rates on him. Having 79 finishing obviously will help him out, and 77 shot power isn't the greatest, but it's not the worst either. So I think that Divock Origi up top will definitely, definitely be a great striker to have. Plus, he does have 82 strength. So, again, I don't see very many defenders pulling him off. Next is going to be Andre Sherla. And the reason I pulled up, uh, the reason I picked Andre Sherla is just because he's always been a reliable card, reliable card for me. His Chelsea card in FIFA 15 was absolutely unreal. And then his striker card, I believe, in FIFA 16 or FIFA 17 was absolutely crazy. I think it was FIFA 16. But as you can already see here, he has an 84 beast rating. Coming in with high, high work rates, which can always be changed with instructions. Three-star skill moves, four-star weak foot, 83 pace, 82 shooting, 74 passing, 79 dribbling, 70 physical. If I were to use Andre Sherla, I would definitely definitely use him at left forward with that 82 shooting absolutely incredible with having acceleration at 84 and sprint speed at 83 it was a very good that's very good pace for a winger like I said in the previous video and the video before that given the global downgrade of pace in FIFA I think uh, 83 pace is definitely definitely good for a winger having a positioning of 80 and finishing of 80 I would definitely have him up top because it seems like he would be a perfect person to rely on when your strikers aren't finishing and in, just in case you are using somebody with low shooting such as like Brill and Bolo. Um, with finishing of 80, he also has 86 shot power and 83 long shots to complement that. So if you get Andre Sherla on his right foot outside of the box, I hit it. Just take a shot. I mean, at the beginning of FIFA, there's not going to be a lot of keepers that are saving long shots. And if you guys played the beta or the demo or even got to go to the capture event, long shots in this game are completely broken so far. Also, he has uh, 80 reactions, 79 ball control, 81 dribbling, and 75 composure. With 81 dribbling, he will be able to get past most defenders. Unfortunately, he's not as agile as I wish he was. I remember in FIFA 15 when he had four-star skill moves, he was absolutely incredible. And then coming in with 80 stamina, you don't have to worry about him getting tired towards the end of the match. At least not extremely tired where you know you're going to have to make substitutes. Coming in on the right wing is going to be Kingsley Komen. Medium low work rates, four star skill moves, three star weak foot, 92 pace, 75 shooting, 72 passing, 82 dribbling, and 58 physical. No, his physical is not high at all. Even though he is 5'10, which is a good height for a winger, he has, seven, he has 
93 acceleration, 92 sprint speed, and 87 agility with 84 dribbling. Kingsley Coleman, when he's on the ball, he's going to be gone. Just take big touches with him, and he's going to be out of there. If you watch videos from, like, Marshall, who did a player review on uh, Dembele, go ahead and check that out. I'll leave his link down in the description. He even talked about pace and dribbling, and Dembele is another one of those players that once they're on the ball, do a big touch, and they're gone. Nowhere to be found. Um, he's... I think Kingsley Coleman is the type of player that will just absolutely harass defenders. I mean, having 75 finishing and 76 shot power is not bad at all for a winger. And like I said, if he's going down the ring, just cut in on that. Just cut in, use his uh, strong foot, and just shoot to the far post every single time. I don't see this card being easily stopped, like, at all. Um, if we go ahead and take a look at some comparisons here, the main two right uh, the main two right wingers in the Bundesliga to be starting out is going to be Kingsley Komen and Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko is a five star skiller, so he does ha have that on Kingsley Komen. Unfortunately, he does have high high work rates, and he has a two star weak foot. He has 81 pace, 78 shooting, 80 passing, 82 dribbling, and 76 physical. All very very good. Uh, and compared to Kingsley Komen, Kingsley Komen, uh, looking at their in game stacks, Kingsley Komen has better acceleration, better sprint speed, worse positioning, worse finishing, uh, worse shot power, worse long shots. Yarmolenko actually has really good long shots of 82. Um, he has decent volleys of 77, uh, higher penalties of 70, but he has worse vision, worse crossing, worse free kick accuracy, worse short passing, worse long passing. However, better curb. Much better agility, much better balance, worse reactions, worse ball control, worse dribbling. Um, can't really tell the composure stat just because Yarmolenko doesn't have a composure stat so far. But his interceptions, heading accuracy, marking, standing tackle, sliding tackle, all that stuff is worse. However, his jumping is better, but his stamina is worse. So I would say, and his strength is worse. So I would say if you could have both, they would be perfect subs for each other just because... Um, Kingsley Coleman doesn't have that high of stamina. With 74, you can definitely expect towards the end of the game he will start kind of falling off. Going into the comparisons for the left wingers here, the main left winger, there's some very good left wingers and left mids in the Bundesliga this year. Um, I pulled up the main three that I saw, which was Andre Schurler, Julian Brandt, and uh, Bruma. With uh, Bruma obviously having the highest pace of the three, Andre Scherla beats both of them out in positioning, finishing, shot power, long shots, volleys, and penalties. However, Julian Brandt does have that better vision. Uh, Scherla has the same crossing as Bruma and better than Brandt. Brandt has better short passing. Scherla has better short passing than Bruma. Bruma has the best long passing. Scherla has the best curve. He has the best uh, reactions, worse agility and balance, worse ball control and dribbling. Julian Brandt has the best ball control and dribbling. Uh, the best composure, which is actually, I found out, is extremely important. Composure is pretty much how well your player performs to the best of their abilities when they're under pressure. So if they see a defender is like 10 feet away from him, they're going to freak out if they have really low composure. Somebody with a composure of 75, like Andre Scherla, he keeps his composure. He still performs pretty well when under pressure. Um, he has the best interceptions, has the best heading accuracy. His marking is only two lower than uh, than Julian Brandt, but that doesn't really matter because that is a defensive stat. However, his standing tackle and sliding tackle is better than both of them by a long shot. His jumping is worse than Bruma's at 79. However, he has the best stamina of the three, the best strength, and the best aggression, which is why I chose Sherla. Even if we take a look at the next set of left wingers, you have uh, Konoplyanka, Nabry, and Intep. Again, even though these, these are all very pacey players, I think Sherla has them beat out in positioning, finishing, shot power, long shots, volleys, penalties, and a couple other stats that really matter. Konoplyanka has really good free kicks, has great curve, uh, good agility, good dribbling, good ball control. Um, his composure is okay. It's one less than Sherla's. But as a whole, I would say Sherla is the best left winger to go with. Moving on into the camp spot is Emil Forsberg, who's absolutely amazing for uh, Leipzig. Coming in with high medium work rates, three star skill moves, four star weak foot, 75 passing, uh, sorry, 75 pace, 74 shooting, 83 passing, 83 dribbling, and 66 physical. Um, obviously, 
you're not going to be using him for shooting incredibly, not too much anyway, but his finishing is decent. Coming in with 72 finishing, 75 shot fire, and then 80 long shots, which is actually very, very good. I don't see him being expensive, so I would say 100% pick him up with vision of 86, uh, crossing of 86, free kick of 77, short passing of 86, long passing of 70, and curve of 81. His passing is going to be absolutely incredible. His dribbling is also very good as well with agility of 85, bounce of 83, reactions of 80, ball control of 85, and uh, dribbling of 82. And then he has decently high composure of 79. This is going to be a very, very good card to use this, this FIFA, I believe. He can even compete with the likes of, I think, you know, very good Bundesliga squads, even when you get the Aubameyangs and the Lewandowskis, I still think this is a player that you can have in your squad to either be a starter or a sub. Moving into the first center mid position is going to be Leon Goretzka, a card that I absolutely loved last year. His man of the match was in. Incredible. Coming in with 84 pace, 83 acceleration, 85 sprint speed on a center mid is absolutely ridiculous. All stats are above are 73 plus, which is absolutely outstanding. For a shooting for shooting, he has great long shots, good shot power, okay finishing, and good positioning. For as far as his passing goes, he has great vision, okay crossing, okay free kicks, great short passing. Pretty decent long passing coming in at 78 and a curve of 76. I think if you get him on the ball and you take a long shot, it's going in the back of the net. Coming in with agility of 76, balance of 72, reactions of 83, ball control of 82, dribbling of 80, and composure of 78. He's a very good dribbler on the ball. Even though he's 6'2", he's very, very good on the ball. I think he's going to fit that center mid spot perfectly. With defending of 77, interceptions 82, heading 74, marking 73, standing tackle 78, sliding tackle 78. He's going to be an absolute monster. And hopefully this card is not expensive. I picture him being very cheap just because he does play for Ch for shock. And I feel like he was overlooked until the until Germany just won the Confederation Cup, I believe. I think he was pretty overlooked. Uh, coming in with his physical Jumping of 67, which isn't that great. However, he has stamina of 86. So towards the end of the game, this guy is going to keep on chugging, which is very, very good for your stamina. I mean, for your center mids. With high, high work rates, he's going to be a box-to-box -box midfielder, which is exactly what you want with high stamina. With aggression of 84 too, he's going to be going into tackles cleanly and hard. He's going to be trying to win the ball 100%. Moving into our second center mid spot is going to be Junusovic, who almost has 70 plus in all stats. With one inform, literally, he'd have 70 plus in all stats. Coming in with 78 pace, 74 shooting, 80 passing, 81 dribbling, uh, 67 defending, and 74 physical. I think this card is going to be absolutely incredible. High, high work rates, three star weak foot, four star skill move. Uh, sorry. Three-star skill moves, four-star weak foot. I wish he had four-star skill moves. But with acceleration at 77, sprint speed at 78, he's going to be able to keep up with most players in the midfield. Um, 73 shooting, and the things that make that up are the 73 positioning, the 78 shot power, 81 long shots, which is incredible, and then uh, volleys of 82 with penalties of 70, which isn't that great, but I think you'll have somebody else on your penalties. At least I hope so. But 81 long shots, again, if he gets the ball, take a shot. Take a long shot. Dribbling of 81, 86 agility, 91 balance, 80 ball control, 80 dribbling, 78 composure. Again, with composure that decently high, he will perform very well on the ball. I think he's going to be overlooked and very cheap as well. Um, his defending stats aren't that great, but like I said, one in form, and this dude is 70 plus. With physical of 74, he has 93 stamina and high, high work rates. Again, another box to box midfielder. He will get the job done with 76 aggression as well. Moving into our first uh, player in defense is going to be our left back, Wendell. Uh, Wendell coming in with high medium work rates, three star skill moves, four star weak foot, which is irrelevant for a defender, 86 pace. 40 shot, which again is irrelevant for a defender. 72 passing, 71 dribbling, 71 defense, and 72 physical. Even though his defense and physical aren't exactly high, they're not exactly low either. I don't think um, I don't think he'll be priced very high, and I think actually he'll be a cheap beast like he was last year and the year before that. Always in Bundesliga starter squads, just because he is very, very fast. And then again, um, his defense isn't bad, but like I said, it's also not great. It does leave a little bit to be desired, to be honest, but I honestly don't see very many problems with it, especially having a standing tackle of 75, sliding tackle of 80, and interceptions of 76. It's just his marking that's a little bit poor. But I think if you're good at defending, you'll be able to manage. Um, he also has decently good free kick stats, so I... 
if you get a free kick from the left peg, I say use him, bang it in. Next, we're going to be using it, uh, moving into our right back, which is Mitchell Weiser, coming in with high medium work rates, four star skill moves, four star weak foot. I didn't even know he had four star skill moves. It's actually incredible. Has 84 pace with 85 acceleration, 84 sprint speed, um, 62 shot, which is irrelevant for a defender, 75 passing, 83 dribbling, 72 defense, and 70 physical. Again, uh, just like Wendell, his defense and his physical isn't that high, but he is very, very quick on the ball. Um, his agility is very high. His ball control is very high. And so is his dribbling. He does have four-star skill moves. So hopefully somebody can do something great with that. Uh, excuse me. 75 interceptions, 74 standing tackle, and 74 sliding tackle. I think this card would be pretty incredible. He even has 79 stamina, which would be very good in my opinion. Moving on to our first center back is going to be Jonathan Ta. A a guy that just is absolutely incredible. He's always amazing in career mode. Coming in with medium, medium work rates, two star skill moves, four star weak foot, 72 pace, which is extremely well, which extremely good on a center back. Uh, it's 27 shot, irrelevant, 58 passing, 58 dribbling, 82 defending, and 78 physical. His pace, he has 78 sprint speed. 78 sprint speed. It's going to be ridiculous. He is going to be in a, an absolute rock in the defense. If we go to his defending stats, 80 interception, 80 heading, 82 marking, 86 standing tackle, and 80 sliding tackle with 91 strength. This card is going to be absolutely incredible. The only thing that's bringing him down in his physical is that 60 stamina. If his stamina was 70, 75, or 80, his physical would be 80, 81, 82, without a doubt. This card looks absolutely incredible. I think he's going to be a monster defender. And uh, last but not least is going to be Nicholas Stark to be finishing off our defense. 77 pace, which is, again, very, very good. 54 shooting, 66 passing, 67 dribbling, 78 defense, and 77 physical. This card is going to be absolutely incredible with that pace. And then uh, making up his defending stats, he does have 77 interceptions, 80 heading, uh, 78 marking, 79 standing tackle, 76 sliding tackle. And then with physical, he does have 82 stamina. His strength is only a 78, um, but... Again, he does have that 82 stamina, which will keep him going all the way to the last whistle. I think he's going to be absolutely incredible in defense. I also think he's about 6'4". I think he's 6'3". So him and Jonathan Tarr are going to be winning headers for you consistently. And I think that's going to be absolutely vital to this FIFA. And then moving on to the goalkeeper, we have Ralph Farman, who actually didn't pull up. But we have Ralph Farman here looking at his in-game stats. With uh, 83 diving, 86 handling, 87 reflexes, and 85 positioning, he looks like an absolute monster keeper. I can't, I can't imagine uh, any team not having him. Hopefully, he's not too expensive. He's also 6'5". I don't see how he is not better than Ter Stegen, like this guy said right here, and Berkey, like this guy said right here. But... Um, I think he's going to be an absolute great keeper. Hopefully his price isn't too high at the beginning of FIFA. If it is, don't worry. I do have some substitution options that we're going to go over right now. So first thing is going to be uh, Julian Brandt at the left mid. I already talked about Julian Brandt, so we're not going to go too far into it. Next is going to be Bobby Wood. He high medium work rates, three-star skill moves, three-star weak foot, 85 pace, 74 shot, 59 passing, 74 dribbling, 73 physical. I think Bobby Wood is going to be absolutely incredible in the next FIFA, especially the way that the FIFA, that the gameplay is structured. I think he's going to be great. Um, coming in next in the next sub is Jarmalenko, who we already talked about. We're going to be moving past that. Next is going to be Mark Bartra at center back. He can play for either Stark or for Jonathan Ta if you can afford Jonathan Ta. Coming in high, medium work race, three star skill moves, three star weak foot, 77 pace, 70 passing, 74 dribbling, 82 defending, and 71 physical. Looks like a pretty monstrous uh, defending card. Unfortunately, he only has 71 physical, but I think you'll be able to get past that. Coming in in the next sub is the 78-rated Sabitzer with high medium work rates, three-star skill moves, four-star weak foot, 83 pace, 78 shooting, 71 passing, 78 dribbling, and 76 physical. This card is almost good enough, if not good enough, to play at striker if you really, really wanted to. But if you're running just like a short pass, quick passing, pacey kind of team, I think he is going to be your ideal cam. And I think him and Forsberg are obviously interchangeable. That's why I have him here. Next uh, is going to be Diekmeyer, who is absolutely amazing in every FIFA that I've used him in. He's been absolutely incredible, and his card is always underrated. He is always, well, 
underrated for FIFA. I don't watch the Bundesliga, so I can't tell you how he performs in real life. But for FIFA, this card, the face stats aren't that great besides the 86 pace. It, but he is always so good for me. So I think if you can't afford Wiser, then get Diekmeyer and vice versa. If you can't afford Diekmeyer, get Wiser. Uh, next is going to be left back. is going to be Eric Durham here. Durham with 83 pace, 53 shooting, 65 passing, 68 dribbling, 73 defense, 72 physical. I think Durham and Wendell are going to be the two left backs that you see the most in Bundesliga starter squads. Don't be surprised if you see either of them. The only reason I think Wendell might be more expensive is just because, one, he is Brazilian, and then, two, he, um, he's a rare gold, which I don't think that will affect it too much, but hopefully they're both relatively cheap. Next is going to be Bruma coming in the first reserve spot with high, high work rates, four-star skill moves, four-star weak foot, 93 pace, 71 shooting, 73 passing, 85 dribbling, and 65 physical. We already talked about him, so I'm not going to get into it. Uh, Kono Playanka, same thing. Now, Serge Gnabry, I'm actually not sure if we talked about it. I think we did, so I'm going to just go ahead and move past it. Let me actually just check the comparison. Yeah, we did. Okay, so I'm just go ahead and move past Serge Gnabry. Next is uh, going to be Brillin Bolo, medium, medium work race, three-star skill moves, four-star weak foot. I don't know why they took his three-star skill moves away from him, but 81 pace, 71 shot, which does leave more to be desired from a striker, 78 dribbling, and 77 physical. This card looks like it will probably be one of those cheap, non-rare beasts that everybody's going to hate coming up against. So I would say if you can't, if you can't afford... Um, who do I have here? If you can't afford Divock Origi and you can't afford Bobby Wood, I think Brill and Bolo might be the way to go. I see Brill and Bolo and Bobby Wood being the same price. So if you can afford one, I'm pretty sure you can afford the other. And the next, at the last and final spot in this squad is going to be the speed demon himself, Patrick Herman. Coming in with medium, medium work race, three-star skill moves, three-star weak foot, 87 pace, 81 dribbling, 75 physical, 74 passing, and uh, not, what did I say? A 75... Physical? No, 75 shot, 74 passing, and 59 physical, which actually isn't that great. In fact, it's terrible. But um, I think he'd be a great spot. He'd be a great sub for the right for the right wing spot, just because he is pacey. He's very fast, and also uh, his shooting's not awful. So I think he would be a pretty good sub for that right mid spot. But anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did like it, leave a like at the bottom. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And then again, if you feel like I left anybody out, just let me know. Put it down in the comment section below. If you, feel, if you disagree with anybody that I said, please, again, just let me know. And that's pretty much it. I'll catch you guys tomorrow, hopefully, with another video.